When you start making more horsepower in your Fox Body Mustang, there's a couple of items that you need to keep on your checklist. We are actually transitioning over to a new clutch, which I'm gonna catch you guys up with here in a second. But there's a couple items over here on this bench, and there's an item installed on my Fox Body Mustang that, that you need to be aware of when you start making more horsepower to the wheels. It's a safety thing, so I felt we needed to do this video just so you guys know. So in the last video, we removed our T56, we removed our McLeod clutch, which we had seen over a thousand wheel torque in lots of abuse over about a two year period or so. And you can see that the clutch is actually still in pretty good condition for the amount of abuse that it took to the crank. Nonetheless, I'm pretty happy with the way this actually worked out. It was an RXT 1200 McLeod 692307HD. And for the most part, it worked really good for it being a shelf clutch that you can get pretty much from any vendor, but we're not here to talk about that today as we're already well past that we got the rma in and we're about to put the bell housing and the transmission in but we're not going to do that here in this video today. we're going to actually talk about a couple items that we're going to be actually installing new to the fox body mustang today plus i got one that's installed here in the axle that you guys that are making bigger horsepower if you haven't done this mod already you probably should so we'll go ahead and talk about the first mod that's already here on the uh my white turbo fox body that i want to show you guys that you know you start making you know 500 wheel this is kind of a safety thing. So right here, I have both of my T56 Magnum drive shafts. Now this is just your standard Tremec one right here, which is also the same size as a normal factory one. And you can see the, just the difference in size and length. One of the first items that I did uh, is a forged yoke. If you get a T56 swap and you're about to put it here in your Fox body Mustang, go ahead and do this right off the bat. Just go ahead and get you a, you know, a forged yoke. And these are forged yokes that I ordered from Hanlon Motorsports. These are aluminum drive shafts from Inland Empire. And as you can see here, down at the bottom, or one of them's got a 1330 flange and the other one's got a 1350. So let me go ahead and flip the, um, the two drive shafts over. This drive shaft is for the white Fox body here on the channel. And you can see here how the, the difference between the, the two, this is a 1350, this is a 1330. Now this is good for your, Guys, this is a bigger U-joint. This is a more heavy duty. This is something that's super important when you start racing or even just start making north of 500 horsepower or so. And it's also something that if you're changing your gear, you could also change the flange as well as there is a flange that's specific for a 1350. It's heavy duty. It's a good safety thing to have. And be honest with you guys, if you're power added, probably should go ahead and put that on regardless. 1350 joint, forged yoke good drive shaft it's got your safety written all over it and that's all i'm here to do today on the channel is to point out a couple things that are super important for your safety on top of a couple products and that item is a stippler's drive shaft loop now they make variable different drive shaft loops for different cars i mean just in general if you're not running a drive shaft loop and you're making you know really good power on top of the 1350 joint and the forged joke I just told you about, this thing's very, very important because what could happen is you know, one of these U-joints could come loose, your yoke could break, whatever. And when this drive shaft comes down out the front of your car and like literally pole vault it, you know, causing an accident. I've seen it happen in person. It's not fun to watch and it's very dangerous. Now they make variable different brands of drive shaft loops. But this one's kind of nice as we're going to install it here on the channel today how easy it is it doesn't really require any drilling i used to have a drive shaft loop installed on the bottom of the car that required drilling as these used to be where it used to be at but it always hit my drive shaft and it's always making you know ting tang noises every time my <laughs> suspension would change we decided to address that today on the channel with the drive shaft loop and maybe hopefully this will help somebody especially with the flange in the back I mean, legitimately guys, five, 600 horsepower plus, you probably should be doing this mod right here for your own safety. That 1330 joints on borrow time. And so is it that cast iron front yoke. That you so I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, transmission in the bell housing. I'm not gonna do that on this video, but when we get to the point of installing the drive shaft loop, I'm gonna go ahead and video some of that as it's not really all that difficult and it's got good adjustability to it. And it goes in and out of the car pretty easy. It's not something you have to drill to the floor and constantly have to monkey with, so. Well, I had to call my son over here because I don't have any help on a Sunday to put this old heavy ass transmission in. So we're gonna attempt to do that. I'm gonna try to uh, try to be as nice as possible to him. 
<laughs> you guys that held wrench for your dad for all them years when we were younger, y'all know what I'm talking about. All right, do we have Ben? Just do bench presses like 300 at 14. It's ridiculous. Here, put that bolt in over there. Good job, son. It actually went in pretty good. We just tilted it a little bit and took care of some business. Now we're just going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, I know this isn't about the video, but I thought it was pretty cool because it's the first time I've actually asked my son to help me with something very difficult. And this isn't easy to put in, but it went right in. Not much of an issue. So, all right, so we got pretty much the whole swap stacked up here. Got everything locked down, all the bolts on the top, whatever. And we got the uh, flywheel all set here. My measurement earlier in the video of an inch and a quarter on a pivot, you can see how nice and parallel that is as soon as it touches the fingers of the twin disc. So it's gonna be a nice little, uh, nice little throw here. But last thing we're gonna be doing here is trying to make sure that we don't get binding up here on the sheet metal because we're going to be adding you know our stiffler's drive shaft loop right here so we're going to go ahead and get these started on the mount so i could it kind of keeps it in place Now, as you guys can see, it was a pretty easy, quick install. It just takes the place in between the space between your rubber transmission mount and the actual transmission itself. Not too bad. It didn't really bring the transmission up too, too much to where I think it's gonna bind anything. We'll get the drive shaft in and see what it looks like. I'm driving without a drive shaft loop for a long time, and this is a safety requirement. If that thing comes loose, I mean, literally the whole car will take flight for the most part. It'll be like a pole vault. I should have had that in a long time ago. It only took like 10 minutes. If you, if you guys have this Stifler's cross member and the drive shaft loop in your ride, you know, comment below. Let me know what you got behind. Um, this is on a T56, but I do think the T5 one is a little bit different. So we're going to probably get, we got another one over here on the shelf. Guys, I've literally ran that cross member for so many years and it still works just fine. It's made well. It's, it's, it's got a lot of clearance. Uh, we're going to stick the drive shaft in real quick and we'll check to see how good that work works out for us and see how clear we are. Hmm. Looks like we're going to be pretty good here, boys. All right, guys, just to recap real quick, end of the video. If this yoke was to go bad or this U-joint was to break, then this loop would just catch it for safety and keep the car from flipping over. Um, if it comes loose back here, the drive shaft would just fall out. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's an install of one of the uh, channel sponsors, Stiplers. I've been running their cross member for years. You guys see it in here. I got it in all my vehicles. Probably one of the better cross members you can buy out there. And of course, these stiflers, the drive shaft safety loop, super easy. Just got to put it in between your transmission and your mount, uh, bolt it in, and it's pretty much done. You adjust it as needed. But guys, you enjoy this sort of video, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're running one of them in your car. But stay tuned. We've got a lot of videos coming up. We're going to be racing a lot with the white car. We got the coupe coming back. We got the black car and the 387 transition that we're going to be doing soon. So we're going to be very busy on the channel. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to give something back to the channel and get exclusive content to the channel, there's a join button below for channel members. Appreciate everybody. See you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching.